Back at the book segment tonight, a new ABC News poll about Ferguson, Missouri. Do you approve or disapprove of the grand jury's decision not to charge the police officer? 48% approve. 45% disapprove. 7% unsure. So you can see the country's divided on the issue, and it's not only along racial lines. Ideology also plays a part. Join us out from Washington, Charles Krauthammer, author of the big bestseller, Things That Matter, which makes a great Christmas gift. All right, Charles. In our lifetime, do you think this racial divide will ever be healed? Probably not in our lifetime, but when you think about the span of, say, the last 50 years, uh, the division between the races has been absolutely dramatically reduced to a point that would have been unimaginable 50 years ago. Obama himself has talked about this, how far we have come. 50 years ago, there was legal segregation against black people. 50 years later, we have a black president, a black attorney general, a black head of Homeland Security. You could go through all of those. And just to talk about attitudes, forget about elected officials. You don't have to take a poll. Look at advertising by celebrities. Willie Mays in his day was very rarely asked to do any promotion because you couldn't do that with a black athlete. Today, and this is not for reasons of ideology or racial sympathy, but purely for the commercial reason that people want to make money by advertising, you see all kinds of African-American uh, celebrity sports, sports figures. Uh, you've got actors who are promoted, who are actually being used to promote products, which tells you how much the attitude uh, and the has changed in the country in half a century. This is unmatched. I, I, I would defy you to, to name one country in the world where that attitude change has been so radical. I don't think there is one. Now, the black underclass, the people who are poor and live in uh, neighborhoods that are dangerous and um, people who feel they don't have any chance, all right, that they just, the system is stacked against them. That is entrenched right now. And then the people like Sharpton and these demagogues that feed them this hopelessness situation. And it's not your fault. It's white privilege and all of this keeping you down. That's an industry in itself, is it not? No, there's no question that there is a class of racial agitators who live off this. And to some extent, we really have to criticize people who know better, who are their enablers the ones who fund some of these organizations like the you know like uh, Al Sharpton for example the president of the united states should not be inviting into the white house F forget about all the other sins al sharpton has committed and the fact that he's a tax cheat and all that but you go back to the original sin the Tawana Brawley case which was an out and out hoax of a black girl distressed black girl making a false deliberately false accusation of rape against the deputy, uh, I think it was a prosecutor in New York State. Sharpton was behind that the whole way. In the end, he said, sue me. And he was, in fact, sued by the guy, found to have defamed him, and then and never ended up actually paying the fine. So this was, le this was adjudicated in a court. And a man who does that, who stokes racial hatred uh, d d deliberately, should not be anywhere near the White House. Why is the media, he, in your opinion? Why? Well, certainly President Obama knows the controversy surrounding Mr. Sharpton, and yet he doesn't seem to care. It doesn't start with Barack Obama. Go back to the uh, election campaign of 2004, where Al Sharpton was one of the Democratic candidates. Do you remember the deference with which all the other Democratic candidates treated him? This is a man who, given his history in the Brawley case and incitement in several riots in New York City, race riots in New York City, should never have been given any of, the, of that deference. And in part, you know, Shelby Steele and others have written about this. Among, among whites, it has to do with sort of racial guilt. And they have a sense they have to show well, I think people deference. fear him. Otherwise, they, well, I don't think they fear him. Well, they, I think they have a they sense they will trouble. be... 
they will be considered racially insensitive unless they give him Whatever. deference. But I agree with you that he should not be in those precincts. But what about whites who dislike blacks? I mean, certainly that is in play. And blacks pick up on that and they say, look, we know there's a certain white percentage that think we're low or whatever the word is. Uh, how prevalent is that? Well, clearly not prevalent enough to prevent the election of a black president who incidentally carried North Carolina, Florida, and Virginia when he ran for election 2008. You know, that's not exactly Minnesota, you know, Lily White to Minnesota. Clearly there are people in the country who don't like African Americans and who probably opposed Obama on the basis of race. I would guess, and I don't think anybody can show this one way or the other empirically, that the number of whites who felt that it would be a good thing to elect an African American as a way to symbolize the change in Progress. the country probably right. outnumbered, outnumbered the ones who opposed Obama Possibly. on the, the basis of race. All right, Charles, as always, thank you. Fact